This video is going to show you how to make adjustments to your exposure settings to start to make uh, adjustments to your depth of field and to control your depth of field. Uh, if you have a small f-stop, if you are closed down, you will have greater depth of field than if you have a wide open f-stop. But to do that, to make those changes, you're going to have to make adjustments to other settings uh, to keep an equivalent exposure. Uh, so we're going to use a Nikon D40 for this example. And first we're going to pull up a picture that was taken on this camera. And as we look at this, we can see that this is an image that has a great deal of depth of field. Uh, there is a tree with a lot of bark that has lots of detail to it. There are branches in front of that with leaves. We can see those very, very easily. And even behind that, far in the background, there is a picket fence that is pretty clear. So this is an image that we would say has a great deal of depth of field. Uh, deep depth of field where things in the foreground, middle ground, and beyond uh, are all in focus. Now for this image, uh, if we pull up the settings that were there when this image was taken, we can see uh, that with the, the sort of diagram shows a very small iris opening, right? And that is showing us that it is closed down. And if we look over here, we can see F32 is our um, uh, f-stop so closed very very far down but the other settings that are important for exposure are f8 or f f32 is our f-stop next to that is our shutter speed is one eighth of a second and then over there on the side we can see that the iso is 1600 all right so we have a slow shutter speed a very fast iso and those two things are allowing the f-stop to be closed all the way down all right uh, but if we move to the next image here, taken with the same camera in the same location at the same time, we can see that in this one, uh, mo the depth of field is very narrow. The only thing that is properly crisp that we can really see the detail is the bark. And then the fence and the other uh, things in the background are now blurry and so are the um, branches in the foreground, those are not crisp, those are blurry and not easy to discern. So we have, now we have narrow depth of field. Now to do this image, we made a, adjustments to our f-stop, all right, and we had to open up for our f-stop. But if we pull this up and if we open up our f-stop, Right, and we can see that our iris is opening and it's a, ex giving us a little example of an iris opening up. All right, showing us that. Uh, it gets to about F5, which is as far as it will go. But if we look, if we were to take an image with these settings, F5, so wide open f-stop, and the same shutter speed, 1 8th, and the same ISO 1600, this is what we get. Now obviously there is very little detail to this image, and actually if you look just right up at the top, you can see sort of see the edges of the tree. That's it, right? It's completely blown out. There's no exposure. Everything is overexposed because now we have not only a fast ISO and a slow shutter speed, but also a wide open f-stop. So if we want this narrow depth of field, we are going to have to open up our f-stop to accommodate and create a narrow depth of field, but we must compensate by changing our other settings. In this case, it was done by changing the shutter speed. And so and since it, here we have the shutter speed of 1 8th and the f-stop of 5. And again, that gave us a totally bright image. So what we want to do here is change our shutter speed so that it compensates, right? We're going to make our shutter speed faster to compensate for the fact that we opened up our, our iris. And ultimately, it was about 1 
over one one twenty fifth of a second uh, compensated enough to um, have an equivalent exposure. That's what we mean by equivalency. It could also we could also make adjustments by changing the uh, the ISO. All right. So instead of sixteen hundred. 800, 400, 200, we could compensate for some of uh, the overexposure caused by the f-stop, opening up the f-stop by changing the ISO and making it slower. So that's what, how we change the f-stop. Um, we change the f-stop to change our depth of field. The other things that we can also change is our focus point, which is how close or far away we are focusing. And actually when we're looking at the D40s and the D80s, if we're looking at the kit lenses that have only 18 to 55 on them, these are actually pretty difficult to get narrow depth of field. Uh, so if you're going to try to get a shot with narrow depth of field, you're going to have to bring your subject in quite close uh, and you're going to have to combine uh, opening up your iris, your f-stop, and um, focusing very close to the camera to get a narrow depth of field. Um, actually, it's pretty easy to have deep depth of field with this cameras, but quite difficult to have narrow. So you're going to have to open all the way up, compensate for letting in all that light by having a faster shutter speed or a slower ISO or sometimes both, and then move uh, your subject close so that you can get a narrow depth of field. So again, this is the same for any uh, digital SLR. Those changing those uh, shutter speed and ISO to compensate for changes that you make in the with the f-stop.